Hey guys, I did a video a couple years ago for Business Insider uh, and told my experience of how I went and was transitioning my military uh, parachute license to my civilian parachute license. Um, it got millions of views. I, you know, they titled the, the video um, to get uh, a ton of clicks. It said, why Navy SEAL will never go skydiving again. Not necessarily true. But I wanted to, to tell that story quickly again and give you guys some tips for when you do go skydiving because I know a lot of people, maybe they're not looking to, to buy a parachute and go skydiving on, on their own on the weekends, but a lot of people I know, friends uh, all over, like to do tandem. They like to go to a drop zone with their friends, their girlfriends, do a tandem jump, which by the way, jumping out of the airplane by yourself, not strapped to anybody, totally different experience. So if you've done the tandem thing, highly encourage you to take like a half day lesson and jump out on your own with an instructor following you because that's an entirely different skydiving experience. Um, so back in time, I got out of the military, I really missed skydiving. Um, I missed jumping out of the back of a big C-130 ramp um, and parachuting, it's, it's was one of my fears I had to overcome in the SEAL teams, um, learning how to skydive because I had lost a close friend in, in a training accident right before I went to, to get trained myself. But I ended up really loving uh, jumping out of planes. And so I wanted to get my civilian certification. Uh, so I took, my, I took my logbook down to this drop zone. I, I had called several times to make an appointment. I'll leave the location out. <laughs> <laughs> Aside that it was in San Diego, the drop zone is under new, a new management now, being run uh, very well by a, a, actually a former former Navy SEAL. I'm not sure what the drop zone's name is today, but anyway, this was down in South San Diego. I make an appointment, I show up, and it's just pure chaos. I walk into the office, and some some young person is like giving me a hard time, like like I'm some rookie skydiver which I think is, is a part of why, same reason why I can't stand walking into most gun shops, is you get some fat, arrogant <laughs> that talks down to you and is not friendly. Um, and you just kind of get that, that vibe at, at most gun stores. And at, at these drop zones, they're like too cool for school. So here I am, I'm like, you know, like I'm not a, a sky god, but I've got close to 200 skydives. I jumped out of an airplane at 20,000 feet on oxygen, flown, you know, close to 30 miles under canopy. I kind of, not a rookie, but I'm, I'm down there and this person is talking to me uh, very condescendingly at the drop zone, kind of ribbing me. And I'm just like, look, I'm just here to get my, my civilian cert. Can we, can we get, on the, get on with this? So I, I sit there, I watch the video. I, take, I think I had to take a short test. Then I meet my instructor and this guy like is like, right out of fast times at Richmond High, like a cloud of freaking Cheech and Chong smoke ha ha is like wafting off of him. Like he just did a big, <laughs> big bong hit. And he's like, hey bro, you ready to go? Here's your shoot, like get it on, let's go. And, I, and th that was really shocking to me because in the military, before you even walk into an airplane, you're getting a buddy check, a jump master check, a second jump master check to check all your gear, your buckles, your harnesses. And this guy was just like, hey bro, ready, ready to rock? I'm like, okay. Um, I was jumping a, a smaller civilian chute, was not familiar. I mean, I could look at the parachute um, and, and figure out where the, the, the cutaway cord was, the main, the main rip cord normally on the military chute is here. On this one, it was a little ball in the back. Yeah, I could figure it out, but not the most professional experience. So I was really turned off by the whole thing. I, I went and did my jumps. Plus it was rushed. The guy clearly wasn't uh, a very good instructor, not prepared, rushed for time. I was supposed to finish my entire uh, jumps that day. We, we ran out of time because we started late, probably because this guy was, was busy doing bong hits, hits with his buddy in the trailer. <laughs> but the point is, the moral of the story is, if, you, if you're going to jump tandem or learn somewhere, learn from somebody with some experience. I mean, you cannot go wrong going to a drop zone, ask them questions like, okay, what are the instructor's experience? 
level? Have they had any accidents in the past? Some very basic questions like that. Uh, really ask them about the training uh, curriculum and just do a little bit of homework because a lot of these drop zones are, are run very loosey-goosey. Getting a drop zone run by an ex-military uh, skydiver uh, you can't go wrong in I would say most cases, um, but but really just you know would you trust your life to some outfit that you know you have not even asked the basic questions like what's the accident history of the company, what's your training standards, what's the level of experience of the instructor staff, that kind of thing. Just those basic questions and a little bit of research maybe save your life. And I've heard crazy stories. Like for instance, I've known people that got so lackadaisical at some of these civilian drops, drop zones, they've jumped out of a plane and, and forgot to even put a parachute on. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about that you want to avoid at all costs. That video I did for Business Insider, like I said, got millions of views, but it was like the skydiving community was outraged. And I'm like, guys, don't get on me just because I told uh, a, a story that was true and the, and it's a problem across uh, a lot of drop zones I've seen with this kind of lackadaisical attitude. So, um, and, and look, not all drop zones are like that. I'm just saying do your homework and, and make sure that you pick a good one. Uh, it's, I see so many people posting Facebook stories and, and jumping, you know, some of them have four or five tandem jumps, uh, but they never really, when I ask the question, like, okay, what's the, what's the you know, accident history of the drop zone? What's, who own, what's the ownership like? What's the experience level of the instructors? They just look at me like a dog staring at a ceiling fan. Um, I'm like, this isn't like you're going to take a piano lesson. You're actually jumping out of an airplane with a parachute. You know, who packed the chute? You know, those are, those are good questions, right? So do your homework, pick a good drop zone. You can't go wrong with a, with a drop zone or a skydive company that, that's run by military veterans. The, the level of training and professionalism and risk management that we get in the military is just, just hands down uh, some of the best in the world. So anyway, that's my skydiving advice for you all. Uh, you weekend warriors or anyone looking to uh, get out there and jump out of a perfectly good airplane, which I highly recommend. Uh, that's it. Signing out. See you next time.